I would like to dedicate this talk to all my patients. Uh, some might be here. I wish to dedicate this uh, talk to all my patients, wishing all my patients be safe, healthy, and happy. This talk is basically about how to apply mindful walking for relaxation, for stress reduction and wellness. It's also on how to apply uh, mindful walking in mental health conditions. Uh, has been uh, introduced by the MC. I'm a psychiatrist. I run a psychiatric clinic. I help patients with mental health conditions like insomnia, anxiety, panic attack, depression. So I'll also be sharing with you a little bit more specific on how to apply mindful uh, walking in this mental health uh, condition. Yeah. I also have some to share with you. Yeah. So before we go into the actual talk, right, I have a song to share with you. I adapted this song. Ah, yes. Let me read the lyrics to you first, then I will sing to you, and then we will sing together. We walk to the left, we walk to the right, and we walk, and we walk, everything is alright. To the left, I let go. To the right, I don't know. With a smile on the face, rest in here and now. Okay. Shall we recite one time together like what we did like the puja just now? Okay, so we'll uh, recite the lyric together. One, two, three. We walk to the left and we walk to the right and we walk and we walk, everything is all right. To the left, I let go. To the right, I don't know. With a smile on the face, rest in here and now. Then, so this is how the, the tune is something like this. We walk to the left, and we walk to the right. And we walk, and we walk. Everything is alright. To the left, I let go. To the right, I don't know. With a smile on the face, resting here right now. Okay. Is it too high? <laughs> <laughs> we try to adjust, uh. We walk to the left, and we walk to the right. And we walk, and we walk, everything is alright. To the left, I let go. To the right, I don't know. With a smile on the face, rest in fear right now. Very good. Come, shall we sing together? Yeah. And since this is a mindful walking session, uh, for those of you who are sitting here, uh, you can actually uh, do this way. Let the sound of the steps uh, uh, become the rhythm of our company. So it's something like that. We walk to the left and we walk to the right. And we walk and we walk, everything's alright. To the left, I let go. To the right, I don't know. With the sound on the face, rest in here and now. We walk to the left and we walk to the right. We walk and we walk, everything's alright. To the left, I let go. To the right, I don't know. With a smile on the face, everything's alright. Rest in here right now. You want to put everything alright, it's okay. Rest in here right now, it's okay. Alright? Nice song? Uh, of course, I didn't compose the song, but I adapted the lyrics uh, uh, to suit this song. So this, uh, this uh, sharing, I roughly divided the sharing into four parts. Yeah, roughly four parts to help us to focus. Uh. So the first part is about uh, what micro-walking is. What is micro-walking? The second part is on the benefits of uh, micro-walking. Mm -hmm. 
Then the third part, of course, the more, the more important part is the how to practice micro walking, the basic, the basic steps. Hmm, basic steps. And then the last part will be the application, the micro walking, the mental health conditions like insomnia, anxiety, panic, and so on. Right? So we start with the very basic. What is mindful walking? I wonder how many of you, of you here have never ever practiced mindful walking. So this is something very new to you, very fresh, totally no idea. Oh, quite a lot. Okay. And how about those who have some some experience, some experience. It's not totally new. There's some experience of mindful walking. In fact, you try. Okay, and how about those of you who have tried the quite serious mindful walking practice? How, what, what I mean by serious? Uh, you, like, you attended meditation retreat, you sit for one hour, walk for one hour, sit for one hour, and walk for one hour. Ah, very serious. Right? Okay, uh, how many of you already enlightened? You walk until enlightened. <laughs> Since there are quite a number, quite a number of you who are very new to micro walking, for this talk, I assume your experience in micro walking is zero. I assume it's a, a zero. Uh, but for those of you who experience, it's also good to listen to this talk in the beginner's mind. Uh, just, just delete whatever you yeah? uh, So we learn that. Okay. So what is micro walking? Micro walking. There are many ways to describe micro walking. You can imagine that it's a form of meditation. That you can, you can uh, perceive it as a form of uh, meditation. And a lot of, for, for a lot of people, whenever I mention the word meditation, the, the first thing you have in mind like is. <laughs> Agree? Yes. Most of the time I mention meditation. Uh, it's a perception. And people refer to sitting meditation. Well, that is not wrong. That is not wrong. But there are actually many, many ways to meditate. There are many ways to meditate. Sitting meditation is only one of the ways. And mindful walking is another way to meditate. And this is one of the methods taught by the Buddha on how to meditate. Hmm? And then very often in my clinic, very often uh, patients will tell me, Doctor, Doctor, I cannot meditate. Uh, actually, what they mean uh, is they cannot do sitting meditation. Uh, most of the time, of course, they didn't say that, but what they mean is I cannot meditate. Uh, a lot of people, when they say that, they actually mean they cannot do sitting meditation. And that's all right. There are many, many options. The Buddha taught many, many types of uh, meditation. If you can't do sitting meditation, then maybe you can explore walking meditation. In fact, I was also often asked uh, in my clinic setting, uh, in my clinic setting, I was often asked uh, if I have some mental health condition, either insomnia or anxiety or panic or depression, uh, what kind of meditation is the most suitable? Do you have these questions? Have you heard of people asking this question? And I've been pondering on that question for quite some time. Uh, now my standard answer uh, will be walking meditation. I believe walking meditation will be relatively easy and relatively safe. Uh, relatively easy and relatively uh, safe. Uh, I can quite easily teach mindful walking meditation to my mom. Uh, by the way, my mom is 75 years old. Uh, and for the for the past uh, past few days, uh, I've been experimenting uh, on how to give instructions to my mom uh, on how to do micro walk uh, micro walking meditation uh, uh, as part of the preparation. Uh, so it's doable even for somebody aged seventy five years old with no background in meditation. It's doable, possible. Mm -hmm. So micro walking is a form of uh, meditation. And I believe, especially if you have mental health condition, I believe it's the safest and relatively easy to do. It's one of the methods of meditation taught by the Buddha, and it's popularized by this Vietnamese uh, Zen master, the late Vietnamese Chik Nhat Hanh. 
eh, the late valuable thing. Eh? Of course, there are a lot of Buddhist teachers, Buddhist masters who teach the uh, micro walking meditation, uh, but he is the one who popularized it. Hmm? Any of you have read this one of these two books? These two books are written by Venerable Chikantan. The first one is called How to Walk, How to Walk Mindfully. The other one is Peace is Alistair. I'm not sure whether the books are available in the Vijayan library. Yeah. If you have not read this book, highly recommended. Highly recommended, especially if you want to learn more. Uh, you want to learn more. Of course, I'll be sharing with you the basic principle. But you want to learn more, I highly recommend it. How to walk mindfully? Is this? I will say. So let's a little bit of introduction on uh, what uh, mindful walking. Uh, basically, it's a form of meditation. Okay. The next one will be the benefits. Ah, uh, myself must promote the benefits as well. Uh, these days, people are very concerned outcome, you know. Right? People are very outcome oriented. Uh, uh, the benefits are uh, in one of the Buddhist scriptures in the Anguttara Nikaya, Book of the Five. So, in this particular collection of uh, sutras, uh, for the Anguttara Nikaya, Book of the Five, the Buddha talks about everything related to five, 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 five. Everything related to five. So, there's a sutra called Chankama Sutta. Uh, relatively new to me, uh, when I was researching for this topic, uh, there's a sutta called Chankama Sutta. C A N K A N A. Where the, where the Buddha talks about the five benefits of mindful work. Uh, Chankama Sutta. Those of you who like sutta studies, uh, you may want to go into this sutta. Chankama Sutta, Anguttara Nikaya, Book of the Five. Whereby the Buddha talks about five benefits of my walking or walking meditation. Can you guess what did the Buddha say in this sutta? About five benefits of my walking or walking meditation. Guess. It's something to be wrong. Just guess. Yeah. Calm your mind. Calm your mind. Very good. Yes, exactly. One of the benefits of my walking is calming the mind or composing the mind. Uh, compose the mind. Not, not the music composition, uh, compose, calm the mind, still the mind. It's one of the five benefits. And in fact, that is the one that I'm going to emphasize with. Mindful walking has many, many benefits, but this is the one I'm going to emphasize today. How to use mindful walking to compose the mind, calm the mind, still the mind. Very good. Mm. Others guess? Yes. I give you a clue, right? Eh? Clue. Clue, right? Eh? Shaolin Kung Fu. <laughs> you get it? Balance. Discipline. Hmm? Discipline. Ah, uh, not ready. Balancing. Balancing. Not ready. Exercise. Physical health. Very good. Physical health. In fact, there are a few are related to physical health. Uh, the Buddha talks about physical health as well, not, not just uh, emotional or mind health. Physical health, in fact, they are few related to physical health. Okay? One of them is good digestion. Good digestion of the uh, food. Uh, now I understand uh, why my, grand, my grandma, my grandpa, when I was a kid, uh, they were actually advised that uh, after you eat, uh, do some walking, you just sit. Uh, this is mentioned. Good digestion of food. Second benefit. One more is a less, a less sickness. Less sickness. So two related to physical health. Uh, how about the one Shaolin? Uh? The one Shaolin Kung Fu is uh, actually mindful walking helps us to be more fit in our spiritual cultivation. Uh, the Buddha didn't mention about Shaolin Kung Fu in the Sutta. Uh, but the, the Buddha did emphasize about having physical fitness. Physical fitness so that you can calculate, you can meditate, you can learn the Dharma. Uh, and for your information, that's one of the one of the reasons how Shaolin Kung Fu evolved. The Buddha didn't teach Shaolin Kung Fu, uh, but the origin of Shaolin Kung Fu, uh, because the monks were meditating, they were not very fit physically. Uh, uh, so the Buddha taught them some Kung Fu, uh, so they developed some physical fitness, and the physical fitness can support the spiritual cultivation. 
Okay. So one is for uh, physical fitness. Uh, and the last one is the Buddha says that and the, another benefit of mindful walking, it can help us to be more physically endured. We can have better endurance uh, in traveling for long distances. Uh, and it's something very important during the Buddha's time. Uh, uh, I mean now, not that important. Uh, I need to drive the car, how fit do you need to be? <laughs> no one, isn't it? Uh, but imagine during the Buddha's time, more than 2,500 years ago, uh, no car, no public transport, uh, no car, no motorbike, bicycle, not sure whether you invented it or not. Uh, and the place, like uh, I was told, the place that the Buddha traveled in the, in the middle land, uh, in India, the place that he traveled throughout his life uh, to, to share the Dharma uh, is as big as Mananyong Malaysia. As big as Mananyong Malaysia. Uh, so it's like traveling, traveling to Kedah, traveling to Johor, traveling to Kelantan, Tengganu, all the states by just walking. Uh, so my food walking keep the physical and the so these are five benefits of uh, uh, micro walking as mentioned in the Atkama Sutta. Can we do a review? By the way, the word mindfulness, uh, they're talking about micro walking, the word mindfulness has many layers of meaning. There's many layers of meaning. The, the Pali word for mindfulness is Sati. Sati. Uh, sati has many layers of uh, meaning. And one of the meaning is remembering or recollecting. Remembering or recollecting. Remember what? Of course, remember the Buddha's teaching. Right? Not remember to take a lot of memory. That is not that is a, a usual remembering. In the context of uh, Buddhism, the sati is remembering the Buddha's teaching. Hmm. So let us practice. Remember, recollect. What are the five benefits of mindful walking? As mentioned by the Buddha in the Changshama Sutta, let's recollect. Let's practice mindfulness now. Recollect. Yes. Calm the mind. Calm the mind. Very good. Physical Less illness. Physical health. Better digestion. Yes. Endurance. Better endurance to travel for a long distance. More physical more physical fitness to support us in spiritual cultivation. Very good. Excellent. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Yeah. So we are already practicing mindfulness. The act of recollecting, the act of remembering, the act of reco uh, recalling what the Buddha said is the act of mindfulness practice. Hmm? Of course, uh, most people these days that you mention mindfulness and mention sati, they talk about present moment awareness. Focus in the present moment, the here and now. I guess that, that's not wrong. That's another layer. Huh? Okay, very good. Let's move on. Uh, shall we sing the song again? Do you think you can remember the lyrics without referring to the slides? I will give them a chance. I will show them one time. Okay. Maybe I give you one. Uh, 30 seconds time to remember the lyrics. So this is also remembering, no? <laughs> so it's about walking, walking, or walk, 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 one, huh? walk to the left, walk to the right. And we walk, and we walk, everything is alright. Okay, my luck, show that first. Huh? Later, uh, later, we have to sing without the sex, huh? One, two, three. We walk to the left, and we walk. To the right, and we walk, and we walk, everything is alright. To the left, I let go. To the right, I know no. With a smile on the face, resting here and now. We walk to the left, and we walk to the right, and we walk, and we walk, everything is alright. To the left, I let go. To the right, I don't know. With a smile on the face, resting here right now. Very good. You clap with your legs. Okay, very good. Yeah. So I'll cover the 
the basic introduction, the definitions of uh, mindful walking, which is a form of meditation. I talk about the uh, health benefits. Uh, just want to emphasize a little bit on the benefits uh, for your information. Uh. What the Buddha said is supported by a lot of scientific research. In fact, there are specific scientific research on mindful walking. There's a journal of mindfulness. Uh. For, for those of you who are not in the academic world, uh, for, for information, there's a journal of mindfulness. Not one journal article of mindfulness, it's an entire journal uh, dedicated to publication of studies related to mindfulness. Uh, there are a few studies, specific studies on the benefits of mindfulness, uh, uh, the mindful walking. Okay? One of them, quite recent, I think it was published uh, last year, 2022. Uh, so the effect of uh, mindful walking for patients with cancer, specifically so breast cancer. This study was done in Germany. Uh, it was found that the people with the uh, women with breast cancer, that uh, they practice mindful walking, actually help them to have better physical health, better emotional health, and uh, uh, better well-being. This one study uh, last year. Uh, one more about two years ago, there was a study done in India. Uh, they found the senior citizens. How many of you are senior citizens? Very really senior citizens. Okay. Uh, so they found that for senior citizens, uh, when they practice micro walking, they have better attention. Better attention. Mm -hmm. So that's the second study. One more study was done in Netherlands. Uh, they found that people who practice micro walking they have better mood and better attention. Better, better mindful attention, then they have better mood, better mood, and better attention. So, some of the few studies. Okay, now to the more important part the practical. Uh, practical. Uh, there will only be demonstration, no, no practical sessions for you. Uh, so, this is the first time I'm, I'm, uh, I'm giving this talk. Maybe one day it can be expanded into a workshop. Uh, but today is more of just demonstration. So the first part, I'm going to give you the five-step basic method. The basic method. The basic method has five steps. After the basic method, then I will share with you uh, three variations, two extension, and one bonus. <sighs> because it's creating my book working so many, many, many methods. Uh, there's a basic five-step method. Then we have three variations. Then we have two extension and a one bonus. Okay. Okay. This one talk. I have to talk my walk and walk my talk. <laughs> because this is talk of my walking. Okay. Uh, so five step instruction. The first the, the first step is quite simple. And this one I'm talking about mindful walking in indoor setting. Uh, mindful walking in outdoor setting, I will, I will cover it later when I talk about the application for depression. Uh, this is what I'm talking about indoor. Uh, so the, the first step is very simple. We need to find a place that we can walk freely back and forth. Walk freely and safely. Uh, example, this is a good place. You can walk freely. Uh, walk freely, safely. I'm safe here. Uh, I can walk freely. Hmm? Uh, uh, if I walk this way, I don't have to think. If I have to walk this way, like, let's say I have to walk this way, this is not walking freely. So if I walk like this, this is not walking freely. I, I have to think a lot. This is not walking freely. Hmm. So something like this, that is a practice. Output place. Place that you can walk freely, back and forth. You know, no option. That's simple, isn't it? Huh? If you are not sure, please put out your hand and clarify. Huh? Not sure, put out your hand and clarify. Hmm? The second step is when you're walking, try to lock the hands. Lock the hands. What do I mean by locking the hands? Oh, this way. Oh, 
is very important. That's what is the rationale. Less distraction. Yes, very good. Less distraction. Uh, less distraction. Is it a must? It's not a must. Uh, if you have a, if a season in practicing mindfulness, you don't need all these things. Uh, so it's very basic instruction to support those who are starting your practice. Uh, the whole idea of blocking and hand is to minimize distraction. It's nothing wrong, like, it's not wrong to walk this way, but it's quite distracting. Like. Uh, yeah. So of course, uh, you have to try it out to see which method is the most suitable for you to block your hand. Uh, for me, I, I try it many, many, many times, but the one that is my favorite is And I do a little bit of imagination uh, when I lock my head. I imagine either the Buddha or, ven or Venerable Thich Nhat Hanh holding my head. So, second part is just lock the head to minimize distraction. Okay? Then the third one is maintain the double gaze. Maintain a downward and soft gaze. You know what is a soft gaze? We talk about downward first. Uh, uh, what is downward? So this is downward. This is not downward. This is not downward. Makes a lot of difference. 
Sorry. I just have to show you that. It's not absolutely good. It's really good. Yeah, I just have to show you that. That's not it. A little bit, no need to be ha 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 ha. A little bit, that's what it is. So that's three steps already. First step is just yes, then what? Ah, wait, I will let you know the number four and number five will answer your question. What's the difference? There's a different limit compared to soft gain and uh, hard gain. Oh, I mean, when uh, you are walking, let's say you're walking on the street, uh, you don't look hard, I mean, you don't look at people. Uh, you cross the road, of course, you have to cross the road and to look around. Uh. Hey, just now, when I walk from the papa walking, I, I, do, I do look around, I do look at my steps. Okay, and then there is a destination one. The usual walking is very, there's a destination one. So I, from one place, I walk as a destination. This one is, just waiting now. There is no specific destination you want to go to. And it's minimizing distraction. It's just focusing on the walk. Yeah. So for you to contemplate, your usual walking and this walking one is different. That's quite different. So what I, what I describe it now is, Mindful walking is not just walking. There's a huge difference between walking and mindful walking. Thanks for asking that question. That allows me to differentiate. There's a big difference between walking and mindful walking. So your thinking process uh, should be like what Sister and White doing. The thinking process. How does it differ from the usual walking? Uh, please don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that usual walking is wrong. You know. Uh, it's just a different style of walking. The purpose is different. Uh, we are learning this to compose the mind. Our usual walking is supposed to reach a certain destination. Uh, isn't it? That's why I walk from the car park to here. The purpose is to reach the destination. But when we do mindful walking, the purpose is to calm the mind. Yeah. Step one, find a comfortable place so you can walk back and forth freely and safely. Step two, to minimize distraction. Step one, maintain a downward and soft gain without your smile. Now I come to the fourth step, and this is the most important one. This is the most important one, is to walk mindfully. Walk mindfully. Okay, what I mean by walking mindfully, eh? it means when we walk, we just walk. We don't do other things. When we walk, we just walk. We don't do other things. Okay? For example, you have borrow your phone. In one walking, you are answering your phone. Hi, 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 hi. Hey, are you going for lunch? What time is the factory? Are you in the factory? Is this walking? Is this walking? Yes. Yes. It's walking. But it's not micro walking because we are multitasking. We are doing more than one thing. So in micro walking, it's only walking. We don't do other things. Okay? In micro walking, thanks, we also try to focus our attention on the present moment. We try to let go about the past and let go of the future. Uh, whatever plans we have, who's good first? Whatever we regret our past, we just put it aside for the moment. So, we try to let go of the past and future. Uh, if you let go of the past and future, what do we focus on? Let me show you something interesting.
Mindful walking is an attention training. That's why I say we try, we, we try to focus in the present moment. We try to put our attention in the present moment. Okay? Since attention is a very abstract concept, attention is an abstract concept. You have to ask you, show me your attention. Do you think you can show me your attention now? Very difficult, isn't it? Ah. So therefore, in the in mindfulness training, usually I use the top slide to represent attention. Okay, top slide to represent attention. Now my attention is on you. Now my attention is on my right foot. Now my attention is on my left foot. Now my attention is on my movement. Now my attention is on the voice. Say something. Hi, attention on the voice. So I'm using this to represent attention. It's easier to learn and easier to discuss. Um, so in mindful walking, the attention is in the present moment, and specifically is the present moment associated with the walking process. The walking movement, walking sensations, and sometimes there is sound as well. This is sound, but it's associated with the walking. It is a walking sound, a walking movement, the movement, or the walking sensation. So the focus, the attention is on this. Not about the past, not about the future. It's not the time for solving problem. It's not the time for planning. There's nothing wrong with planning. There's not nothing wrong with the problem solving. But this is not a time. You might go up Attention is it? Huh? So we don't plan what we're going to cook tonight, where we will go this afternoon, where I'm not going to have my lunch, I'm going to have my lunch in regional center, or I'm going to have my lunch with somebody else. Uh, this is all planning. Right? Hmm. So this is uh, number four. Is to focus in the present moment. And what I hope is a little bit clear the difference between walking and mindful walking. Huge difference. We have been walking our whole life, you know. I might not be walking right now. Right? Mm. Okay, the, the fifth part. The fifth part is whenever the attention, whenever the attention runs away. Whenever we are distracted, whenever the mind wanders, so I'm using this to represent mind wandering. Of course, we hope in mindful walking, our attention is here and now, present moment. That's what we hope. That's why we want to train the mind to be here and now, present moment. Huh? I know my step. But the nature of mind, mind is like monkey mind, but you run around. Run, 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 run. run. Is it? Okay? So the fifth part of the instruction is whenever our mind runs away and we represent this, let's say this, this is a distraction. Let's say I have the thought of ah this afternoon, uh, should I have my lunch here in the Jeff Center or should I have my lunch with my friend? Let's say I have this thought, this is right. Okay? So the fifth part of the instruction is just notice. Notice the distraction. And in this context, the distraction is a thought of should I have lunch in the gym center or should I have lunch somewhere else? Huh? And you have decided to have lunch somewhere else. <laughs> it's just for demonstration purposes only. Huh? Huh? Just notice. And bring the attention back to walking. I repeat the instructions. Huh? All we need to do is notice the distraction. Notice it and bring the attention back to the walking process. What do we do with this? Well, we can just notice it and just drop. Sometimes it's quite simple. All you need to do is just notice the top and then make an intention to just drop. And 
Let's back off. But sometimes the mind doesn't behave itself. I drop already, you come back to me. <laughs> huh? It's like I throw it and drop. And you come back. Sure. Come back to me. Hey, of course. I do my walk me. I notice already, I drop. I walk, walk. He come back to me. Familiar with it. Familiar with it. Ah, okay. So, the instruction is, you notice it, you drop. You never come back fine, huh? If you come back, okay. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you can try to drop and drop and drop. Another method is, you don't have to drop, you just let it be. Let it be. This is the meaning of let it be. Okay? And you just continue. Let it be. But let it be here, let it be here. Don't let it be, don't put it here. Let it be. You know, sometimes people use the phrase let it go, let it be. Well, they have different, different meanings, right? But this is how I use it. Let it go is you just notice it, ah, drop it. Drop it or not throw away. There's a huge difference between just drop it and throw it. Drop it is you notice as a thought or planning. Alright, thank you. Gently just. Just throw it. Throw it away is. Oh, this stop again. I hate it. <laughs> that doesn't work because you immediately bounce back. That's how the mind works. Huh? Just not it. Just throw it. If you come back again, just let it be like I see it like, hey, from the door. Right? So there's a basic five-step construction. Let's recollect. Mindfulness is recollection. Sati is recollection. First step, simple. Just find a comfortable place to walk freely, safely. Second one, lock and Minimize distraction. That one. Downward, soft gate. Put out a little bit of stuff. Number four, walk mindfully. The awareness is on the steps and movement. Okay. Number five, if there any distraction, notice it. Either drop it or just let it be. And go back to. So that is the basic instruction. It's a basic, uh, very basic. After that, we're going to have the three variations, two expansion and one bonus. But make sure you get the basic Kung Fu. Uh. Even Shaolin Kung Fu, uh, you have to go to basic first. Uh. If you watch Kung Fu movie, uh, the Kung Fu, they call what the Zap, uh, stance. Uh. Get the basic stance correctness. Uh, so that is the basic. Hmm. Anything you want to clarify? What is basic? When is the best time for them? Hmm? When is the best time to walk? When is the best time? Uh? Whenever you're walking. <laughs> I'll say when you're walking. Uh, of course, you can, you can set a time just like, just like sitting meditation. You can, some people do it in the morning, some people do it uh, at night. Okay? But I will say the most common thing will be whenever they're walking. Just like when you do micro breathing, they're breathing all the time. Uh. Just need to add a uh, micro component. Since you're walking quite often, often now you're sitting there, after you're going to walk. Huh? So whenever we're walking, huh? the best time is whenever we're walking. Huh? I'm going to show you a lot of creative methods so that you have many, many ways to practice my walking. So whenever you're walking, wherever you're walking, whenever you're walking, I hope you can integrate some of this. Huh? Good, uh, there is no need to have special, special time. Huh? Yes? In a close eye, in the familiar, familiar, good question. In fact, when I, 
I attended a course called a dot B course. Anyone have heard of the dot B mindfulness course? It's a UK-based program, circular mindfulness program for adolescents. For it's called dot B. Dot means stop. B means break. Called dot B. Ah. And uh, interesting, they have a very interesting way to, to practice, uh, to, to guide people on micro walking. They encourage you to close the eyes. Okay? Uh, uh, I'll just demonstrate how, how they give the instruction. You see, close the eyes, close the eyes, but it must be a familiar, safe and familiar setting. Close the eyes, then you walk backward. Uh, in fact, they ask us to form a circle. Right? You form a circle. Circle. And then you walk backward. You walk, 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 until your back touches somebody. It's an interesting exercise. You know, try it in Sunday school. You know? It's a very creative way of uh, teaching micro walking. Walk, slowly. Uh, of course, if when you close your eye and you walk backward, it will be extra mindful. Agree? Uh, because you open your eye, I, I walk for how many years already? Really? Hmm. How young are you? <laughs> uh, yeah, walk 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. So you walk so many years, and sometimes walking becomes autopilot. When you close your eyes, ah, then we start to bring awareness to the walking sensation, the walking movement. It can help to heighten the awareness. Huh? So the answer is yes, but make sure it's a safe and familiar environment. Huh? Some people cannot feel it. Okay? Some people tell me, uh, I cannot feel. You see, they feel the walking, be aware of the walking. They cannot feel, you know. I tell you, close the eye. Imagine that you're a baby, uh, you're starting to walk again. Close the eye, delete memory. <laughs> Imagine, uh, close the eye, delete memory. Oh. Walking on that one. Oh, left step on that one. Oh, right step on that one. Hey, you can tap that. Thanks for asking. Hmm? Close the eye, walk that one. This exercise uh, is help to compose the mind. Remember, just now we talked about the five benefits of uh, micro walking, uh, and one of them is to Compose the mind. Uh, compose the mind, skill the mind from negative states. Uh, uh, from a depressed state, compose the mind. From a anxious state, compose the mind. From a restless state, compose the mind. From a sleepy state, compose the mind. Well. In fact, this mindful walking instruction was given to Venerable Mongalana. You know, the Venerable Mongalana, one of the two chief disciples of the Buddha. At uh, one time, uh, Venerable Mongalala, he was having a, having a lot of drowsiness, a lot of sleepiness. Hmm? Uh, and the Buddha gave the recommendation of like, walking. Uh, in fact, now, he has been sitting here for quite some time, maybe about half an hour. If you feel sleepy, actually, one of the, one of the ways is he can do my walking. Okay? This is BGM Center. <laughs> uh, we, know, we know you are alright if you get up and walk. In other settings, it's a bit funny, uh, you suddenly get up and walk. Uh. Uh, but in this setting, if you feel you are tired, having body ache, or you are drowsy, you can actually walk. Uh, not right in front of here, like you are behind. Uh, uh. You walk. You just walk, and you listen, walk, and listen. It's much more difficult to fall asleep. Agree? Uh. In fact, sometimes I listen to drama talk, I, I do walking as well. I just sit there and listen to the drama talk. Very sleepy. But if my mind is sharp, why not? My mind is not sharp. Just play the drama talk and do and do thing and listen to the talk. We bring up the energy level. The mind become more composed. Then you listen to the drama talk. They absorb it. Ah. Hey, good. Or in certain kinds of uh, when your mind is unsettled, you walk faster or mm, what was the speed? Excellent, excellent. Good question. Thanks for asking. Yeah. 
Have you heard of a word called kindfulness, which is popularized by Adam Brown? Ah, uh, Can you help me to write the word kindfulness? Kindfulness. How many of you have heard of the word kindfulness? Kindfulness. Not mindfulness, no. Kindfulness. Ah, wow. So, a few of you are uh, quite, quite at once. Uh. Kindfulness is a term popularized by meditation teacher uh, Ajahn Brahm. Okay? Uh, in mindfulness practice, it has to go together with kindness. Mindfulness is about attention, awareness in the present moment. So in mindful walking, it's the present moment experience of walking. It's important to add the kindness component. Exactly how do we add the kindness component? When we add the kindness component, we call it kindness. This is the point by Ajahn Brahm. Uh, of course, it got very popularized, got popularized in the Western world. Right? How do we add the kindness component in relation to your question is you listen to the body. You listen to the mind and body and you adjust accordingly. Listen to the mind and body with kindness and adjust accordingly. Okay? If your mind tells you, I think it's more helpful to walk faster now. Okay? Example, if you are in an angry state, very frustrated, full of anger, full of resentment, it's a lot of energy, you know. And Full of energy. Okay, walk faster. If you're very sleepy, very drowsy, you, you walk. You walk like a office, right? <laughs> it's not being really kindful to the mind, but you also walk faster. Ah, when you come to a certain time, the mind will settle down, the mind will steam. You find that you walk too fast, right? you become distracted. You need to adjust the speed. Okay? So, adjust the speed according to what the mind body needs. That is the practice of kindness, a more advanced form of mindfulness. You can see it in that way. Does that answer your question? Good, yeah. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I continue? So that's the basic. Ah, okay. So I promise with the basic that we have a three variations. Alright? Mm -hmm. Yes? Ah. Mindful walking. Compose the mind is heal the mind. Calm the mind. Yes, so I'm going to give another. 3 plus 2 plus 1, 6 more. 3 variation, 2 expansion, and 1 bonus. Uh, so I will give another 6 methods, but they are all extension of what I just saw. Okay? Uh, because the title of this talk is Creative Money Working, we do it in different, different ways. Right? More variety, but then you go to a restaurant, you can eat, you can eat, you can eat, you can eat, Boring la. Even Thai Fa also go to different different stores. Uh, so my go keep the store called different different stuff. Okay? Okay. Mm. Okay. Okay, this one. Mm. So the first variation, you add a mental, uh, sorry, add a verbal anchor, not mental. You add a verbal anchor so that you can anchor the tension better. Mm. Example, example. Ah, let me give you a different, different example. Okay, there is no right, no wrong, no no good, no bad. It's just a different, different stuff. Okay? Mm. The simplest will be when you're walking mindfully, as in the what I mentioned just now, you just say left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, verbally. Either verbalize it aloud or verbalize it silently. Right, 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 right. Or left, right, left, right, left, right. Verbalize it softly or verbally loudly. Depends on situation. You ask the mind of it. Huh? Mm. And it has to be left, right, left, right, not. Right, left, right, left. So it's a synchronize. Left, right, left, right. Ah. 
In fact, while you're sitting, uh, you can actually sort of, you know what you call it, sitting walking meditation. <laughs> uh, I mean, you can, uh, you can sit on a cushion and you, you can do. Uh, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Left, right, left, right. So this is called a verbal anchor. You, you add a word to anchor the attention. Right? Can be as simple as this. Or you can uh, expand it a bit. You can say left, left, left by left, 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 left by left. And make sure synchronize. Left, left. Left, right, left. It should not be left, right. <laughs> that way it's not my way. Ah. And whenever you notice the mind wanders away, so where is my mind? My mind is my pocket. There you go. Left, 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 right, left. The moment you notice the mind got distracted, just notice it, drop it. And you restart with right, 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 by right, 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 by right. Uh, if you can sustain your attention, just continue. Uh, if you notice your mind got distracted, just notice it. Drop it. And start with the other side. Left. So you can use any parameter. Then use any verbal anchor. Okay. It's very basic. My my favorite, uh, my favorite uh, is I do it in uh, Cantonese. Okay. And Mandarin. Cantonese and Mandarin. Okay. 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 Those of you who understand Mandarin and Cantonese, you might know the meaning. In English, basically, it is present moment. Uh, uh, is live in the present. Zheng is appreciate the present. Appreciate the present. Right? Basically, you can use any any phrase. Uh, and left, right, left, right. Uh, tell me, tell me the this phrase also. I have a right, I have home. Uh, I have a right, I'm home. This uh, is composed by Venerable Tsing Han. I have a right, I am home. I have a right, I am home. Oh, that's shocking. Uh, right, home, uh, right, home, eh? mm. the rest, uh, of course you can use the song as well, the song we, we sang the song, and in fact this is so my favorite, eh? it's walk, while walking, put a song and sing, we walk to the left, we walk to the right, and we walk, and we walk, and we think it's all right. To the left, I let go, to the right, I don't know. With a smile on the face, rising here right now. And when I hum this song, the song, the lyrics, uh, is related to while you walking. It's all conditioning the mind, programming the mind to walk and pray. It's all related. When I'm very restless, I'm very restless, I need to verbalize it. Okay? Left, 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 by left, left. Uh, then what happened? The mind got distracted. Never mind. Okay? Right, 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 by right, 
a globalizing. Okay, one from mine is more composed than our software day. Left, 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 right, left. That person of mine and mine will be even more composed. I will just restart it in my heart. After some time when the mind is very, very, very composed, uh, even verbalizing in the mind is distracting. I'll just drop it. Then I'll just drop it and just focus on silence. Second variation is by using imagination. Right? Uh, and all the imagination is related to the micro walking process. It's not imagine about other things. If we imagine about other things, then it's only passing. But everything is all related to the micro walking process. Okay? Uh, imagination is also one of my favorite. When I walk, as I notice the sensations of walking, the movement of walking, I imagine I'm creating footprints. In fact, more specifically, I imagine I'm walking on the beach. I'm creating footprints. Like the Buddha's footprint. So it's in my mind. Of course, you cannot see the footprint that is in my mind. Okay? And that helps me to connect to the Buddha, connect to the triple gem, connect to the Buddha's teaching. And that can help to compose the mind. Okay? Any words? The wobble is then use left, right, left, right. You can say let go, don't know, let go, don't know. In fact, you can put the number of chanting if you want. You can put anything. I'm just giving you examples. So feel free to find your own example. As far as something wobble, can be a, a sound, can be a phrase, can be a chanting, can be a song. Something verbal to enter the attention. So I didn't go through all the examples. This is just an example there. There are countless examples. Right? So the same goes for imagination. I'm just giving you some examples. Right? So another one will be walking. We imagine with each step, right, the lotus will appear. When we imagine the lotus, we think of the Buddha. They're all connected. Hmm? Next one. Okay. Or you can imagine you're walking with Venerable Tignaha. Uh, this is the one I mentioned earlier. I say when I lock my hands, I lock it this way. I imagine teacher is holding my hand. All imagination. Okay. Okay. Uh, in fact, I uh, put one is calling my hand. The other one. Is... The other hand is in this way. You know what mudra is this? You see a lot of Buddha in it. The Buddha is in this. Uh, it's called the Abhaya Mudra. Fearless. A buyer with that fearless. Ah, so when I lock my hand, I go there already. So I'm reminding myself, I have no fear. Calm down, relax, compose. I have no fear. So, imagination. Huh? Ah, I think one more is on a rainbow. Imagine you're walking. Huh? Rainbow. Every step, every moment. Huh? Rainbow. And this is just an example. You can use anything you like. But related to the mindful walking, related to, to the triple gem, related to the Buddha's teaching. In fact, there's another one uh, uh, also from uh, from uh, Thich Nhat Hanh, is when you walk, uh, imagine you're kissing the earth. Kiss 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 the earth. Or you think that's too romantic, uh, massage the earth. Massage the earth. Massage the earth. Massage the earth. You don't have to do so slow. Uh, I'm just demonstrating. Uh, it's more of a mental as well. Uh, kissing the uh, massaging the uh, getting in touch, connected. Uh, so I'm just imagining. 
The third variation is to combine it with breathing. Ah, it's possible to do micro breathing and walking together. Ah, hmm. So one simple way, the, the simpler one will be this way. This one is simpler. So you don't do both at the same time. There's a walking and then step off. That's nice. Right. There's another another method. You have to synchronize the, the walking. Breathe in, two step. Breathe out, three step. Breathe in, two step. Breathe out. I'm, I'm not synchronized, I'm, but I'm talking, I'm, I'm explaining, but I'm just describing. Breathe in, two steps, breathe out, three steps. Breathe in, two steps, breathe out, three steps. So breathe out is a bit longer. Okay. In, out. In, out. A, two, out, two, three. 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 Two step. Three step. Two step. Step. Hmm? We synchronize the step with the breathing, not synchronize the breathing to the step. Uh, uh, we synchronize the step to the breathing. Then we follow the breathing. Follow the breathing, not the other round. Right? Hmm. So usually when our mind impresses that the breathe in out is quite fast. Like. That's why I suggest in, out. In, out. But after some time the mind will come down. Uh, when the mind comes down, then you can have three in and five out. And furthermore, four or seven as well. So you have three extensions already. Basic five, the five step. Uh, the first uh, expect uh, the first variation. Sorry, the first variation is just add the verbal actor. Left, right, left, right, left. Second variation add the imagination footprint. The third one is the reading. You still have energy to go for the two expansion. Uh, I just discovered very simple. You want to get the foundation, uh, it's very easy. Just, just build on it. Build on it. Hmm? The 
The expansion number one, you do a kindful walking. Kindful walking. So mindful walking, you expand, you do kindful walking. Very simple. Once you got the basic, after you walk for some time, the mind is quite calm, you just walk. And then you convert it into a loving kindness practice. Hey, uh, may my mom be safe, healthy, and happy. May she be relaxed, calm, and peaceful. May she continue to practice her qigong, practice her mindful walking, and learn the Dharma more. Uh, so you just walk and just convert it into a meta meditation. Uh, because by, by this time, the mind is quite calm already. Walk and just positive vision. Okay? Uh, so walk a few rounds, mom, then you go. Then next, may all my patients in the clinic, may they be safe. May they be healthy, may they be happy. May they take the medications diligently, may they be free from side effects, may they recover fully, may they never need my service anymore. Okay? Uh, and maybe pause for a while, do some reading. And may all the brothers and sisters who attended my talk today, may they be able to understand, able to put into practice, and find a way that suits them. You do my whole thing. So you just convert it into loving kindness. So it's called kind food. So my food walking is very kind food walking. Hmm? Hmm. Another way of doing kind food walking is uh, I'll imagine I'm walking for my mother. By the way, my mom had a very bad accident uh, about a year past ago, very bad, still recovering. recovering. Much better, but still recovering. She can't walk well. So I imagine as I walk, I'm walking for my mother. She can't be here now. But imagine I'm walking on behalf of my mother. I walk for my mother because my mother cannot walk freely. I walk for her. So it's a form of kindness like this. Okay? I also walk for my late father. My late father, before he passed away, he also had a very bad spinal problem. He couldn't walk. Hey, uh, so I also imagine I would walk for my father. In fact, I can imagine holding them. One hand for my mom, one hand for my father. I walk for my parents. I walk for my mother. I walk for my father. I walk on behalf of them. It's my gift to them. It's a way for me to practice the very kindness. Okay. Or you can expand further from kindness, loving kindness, you expand to gratitude. Gratitude basically, while walking, you recollect on all the things that you can sadhu about the matter. Uh, all the things you thought, Buddha is going to sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Man. You just walk, you sadhu on all the things that you can sadhu. Like, okay. example, ah, this morning I went to BGF. Uh, to do a dharma sharing, to share something on my food walking. I'm very happy. Yes, I do. Okay. And one last week, spend the whole week in the clinic, right like food. I did my best. I tried my best to help all my patients. I tried my best. I'm satisfied. Yes, I do. Huh? Uh, that day, spend some time to teach my mom to guide her on my food walking, elderly, a senior citizen, and memory very bad. You know? I have to repeat the instruction again and again and again and again. It's okay. I was patient. Try my best. Uh, well done. Ah, ah, ah. I'm describing my mental process. Uh, so that is more towards gratitude. Got it? So I will combine the Q&A session and the clinical application. Uh. The clinical application is applying what we learn uh, in, in, men, in mental health related uh, setting like, like insomnia and anxiety. Okay? Mm. Uh, so one of the application is in depression. You heard of depression, you mm -hmm. So one of the problem, one of the main challenges for people with depression uh, that is no energy, very tired. Mm? Very tired, there's no energy. Uh, and we can apply my walking as well. But we need a little bit of right view. Uh, we need a right view. Okay? The right view or the right understanding is in depression, the lack of energy 
does not become better by resting. Resting actually makes it worse. Uh, if you have depression or you have friends or family members with depression, if they have this thought that, oh, I'm very tired, I want to rest more, I don't want to walk, I want to rest more, hopefully after you rest more, you sleep more, you get more energized, uh, it never happened. You know, actually it's the other way around. Uh, you have to actually activate, you call it behavioral activation. And one of the behavioral activation is mindful walking. Okay? For depression, I have a, a few tips. Uh, uh, one is try to walk outdoor. Whatever I said this now is indoor, you know, very convenient, anytime. Uh, uh, for depression, I strongly suggest uh, go outdoor, and outdoor can be around the body tree. Uh, basically, outdoor, we, there's, a, there's a support of uh, positive energy. Uh, with nature, uh, especially morning, with fresh air, with the sunlight, and the body tree. Mm. So I said outdoor, yes. Okay. I also suggest, if possible, walk without shoes. Without shoes. Mm. There's a thing called clinical grounding or clinical earthing. So there's a lot of research on it. It if you walk barefoot on natural ground, like grass or rocks or sand, it's very beneficial for health physically and emotionally. Uh, the, the, the science says that in our body, a lot of uh, negative energy in the form of uh, free radicals. Free radicals, which are positive charge, free radicals. Okay? So when we do a thing, which is basically mind walking on natural force, the electrons from the earth uh, can neutralize this positive free radicals. After all, you're walking. Uh, for effort. So for depression, Get up outdoor, can be with nature in the body feet, walk barefoot, get some uh, sunlight. So that is for depression. Get up, get up and walk. So the one would those uh, like concrete pavement consider Yes. Enough. Yes, usually in the park, sometimes in the park also there are, there's a special park they got certain pebbles. Yeah. Uh, can be flat or can be with pebbles. Yeah. Not this one. <laughs> Not this one. Yeah. Uh, so if you are interested, you can Google this word. Uh, clinical earthing or clinical grounding. But in simple, basically it's mindful walking on natural surface. Uh, grass, sand, rocks. Huh? Yes, yeah. How about walking in the water? Walking in water. Yeah. In the context of depression, as long as you walk. <laughs> as long as you walk. Huh? As long as you walk. Uh, so under depression, I suggest that uh, because of everything I, I, I share just now, they're all indoor. Uh, so if you go outdoor, uh, if you can go outdoor, the extra advantage, but it's a positive energy from outdoor. Uh, from the body tree, from the water from the sunlight, from the earth, uh, these are the additional ones. Uh, uh, the disadvantage is you cannot go outdoor all the time. Uh. Uh, for example, let's say I got insomnia, tonight I cannot sleep. You know? <laughs> Chow or God, midnight I cannot sleep. Uh. How do I walk outdoor? It's difficult. Uh. Uh, uh, but in the context of depression, yes, please go out. Walk outdoor. Uh. Absorb the positive energy of the earth, of the body tree, of the water, of the sunlight. The behavioral activation itself is very helpful for depression. But need to have mindful, the, the right understanding. Uh, typically, people are depressed, they say, I'm tired, so I don't want to walk. I'm tired, so I don't want to walk. I want to go to sleep. No, it doesn't work. That won't work that way. I don't walk first. Maybe the, the initially a bit tiring, but but after you start the engine, the energy will come. The energy will come. The starting part. It's for depression. Yeah. Anxiety. Ah, very good. In the context of uh, anxiety, people who worry a lot. Gangjong, resonance, anxiety. Okay. See, the basic instructions is great enough. The basic instruction just walk back and forth. Hmm? I just want to insert a little bit more sign. Have you heard of uh, a thing called relaxation response? Relaxation response. 
relaxation response is a term coined by Professor Dr. Herbert Benson, a very well-known scientist and doctor. He came up with this concept of uh, a generic way of meditating, a generic way of uh, a generic way of uh, meditating. So, according to years of research, uh, to put the body into a relaxed state, you see, our, our body can be in a fight or flight, stressful state, or it can be relaxed state. Actually, there are two nervous systems. Uh, there are ways to activate the relaxation. Okay? Uh, so, in, in anxiety is too active, uh, a lot of fight and flight response. Uh, the, the body is in a very, very stressed out state. Okay? So, the helpful thing is to activate the relaxation response, the opposite of it. Also known as parasympathetic response, also called known as relaxation response. So, according to Professor Herbert Benson, uh, he spent years of research. Uh, Finally, they came up with only two steps. He said only two essential steps. Uh, only two essential steps to activate the relaxation response. Okay? The first step is he said you need an anchor. Anchor is something for the mind to focus. The anchor can be a sound, a phrase, a song, a word, or a movement. Or a movement. So mindful walking is a movement. Repetitive movement. Okay, that's the first part. The second part will be when the mind is distracted, you bring attention back to the anchor. Which is exactly what we are doing in mindful walking. Huh? So definitely helps with anxiety. Just do it again, again, again. Of course, you tell you like you add all those things that whatever you prefer. That will activate the relaxation response, and there will be a lot of biological changes, physiological changes in, in the body, which is the antidote to anxiety. That's the first point. The second point is anxiety can also come in the form besides the, the restlessness that like it can come in the form of intrusive thoughts certain uh, traumatic thoughts traumatic memories or traumatic feeling or sensation uh, micro walking can also help in fact there's a therapy called EMDR I will call it a thing called EMDR eye movement desensitization and reprocessing you don't need to know in the detail. You just try to relate to what we are discussing. The founder of uh, the, the inventor, the creator of EMDR therapy is called Dr. Shapiro. And this therapy method is very good for trauma. Trauma and anxiety they are related. So they got flashback. So the interesting story of how Dr. Shapiro discovered this, she discovered this when she was walking in the park. Uh, so at one time she, she had some personal issues, uh, she was walking in the park. She discovered when she was walking in the park, and when the eyes move left, right, left, right, for you the walking, the distress becomes less. She discovered that. Right? So all the traumatic talk, traumatic memories, traumatic feeling uh, become less. When you walk in the park with the left side. Right? Uh, so of course she experimented like, with with, uh, with different people and true enough, when the eye move left, right, left, right, right, the traumatic experience, the feeling, the emotion become less. Right? And she did further research, uh, then she found out actually it's not a must to have this eye movement. She discovered any form of bilateral movement. Bilateral means left, we call it bilateral alternative. Bilateral means left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Can help to neutralize trauma. And mindful walking is a very natural way of doing that. Left, right, left, right, left, right. That is a form of bilateral alternative. And that can help to neutralize the trauma. Mm -hmm. So that can be applied to anxiety as well. That's my thumb okay. block. Okay. Ah, okay. Okay. So application for anxiety and trauma, 
Suppose this, this represents the negative part or the traumatic experience. All we need to do is just hold it. Hold it. Because usually trauma is a, it's very sticky one. When you throw it away, it will come back. Right? Yeah. That's trauma. It will come back. That's the time you trauma. That's why I'm saying. Thanks, Rafi. A few more minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, so, according mm -hmm. to, to Professor Dr. Herbert Benson, to trigger the relaxation response, the relaxation response, some people also call it a meditation response. They only need two components. One is an anchor. Ah, this can be a sound, a phrase, or a word, or movement. Ah, so in our context, it's movement. Ah. Ah, if chanting is sound, ah, or certain meditation, they recite the word OM, it's a sound. That's the first part. Hmm. The second part is when the mind got distracted, it just brings back the ah. You can use any method as long as you follow these two patterns. There is an anchor, mind got distracted, you bring it back to the anchor, and that will trigger the relaxation response. And there will be a lot of biological changes, physiological changes, immune response changes, uh, which is related to relaxation, which is the opposite of anxiety. Yeah. So we already we have the key from the Buddha, a very natural way uh, of triggering the relaxation as well. What about insomnia? Insomnia, good. Insomnia, uh, by the way, for all these clinical applications, uh, it's important for you to seek professional help. Whatever I'm sharing with you now, uh, they're just compliments. Uh, they just need to compliment whatever. Uh, it's, it's not that what you do my walking, then you'll be totally cured. But these are some tips. Uh, uh, insomnia, I suggest, one of the recommendations when you can't sleep, let's say you're uh, tossing around on the bed, about 10 to 15 minutes when you can't sleep, uh, get up. The, the recommendation is get up and do something. Don't lie down on the bed. Because the more we lie down on the bed, you will develop bed phobia. Mm -hmm. Bed phobia. Uh, because if this happens for many, many days, uh, <laughs> even before tonight comes, uh, you think about tonight, you think about the bed, you're already scared. Uh, when you start to sleep, when you touch the bed, uh, the phobia already comes. Mm. So we don't want that to happen. So after 10 to 15 minutes, you cannot sleep. Just get up and do mighty walking. I suggest sing a song. Uh. We walk to the left and we walk to the right. And we walk and we walk, everything is alright. To the left, I let go. To the right, I hold you. With a smile on the face, everything is alright. Because you still cannot sleep, but you worry a lot, you know. So you sing a song, relax. Okay? If you want to use the anchor, the verbal anchor, you can do something like this. Sleepy, sleepy, sleepy. <laughs> More sleepy, more and more sleepy, more and more sleepy. Comfortably sleepy, comfortably sleepy, comfortably sleepy. But the program is it's possible to program the mind. Okay? Mm. Then uh, instead of the instead of the breathing, we do this. Yeah. Uh, no, you don't do this one, you do this one, you go away. <laughs> so you want to trick the mind to fall asleep. Oh. 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 Sleepy. 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 Uh, soft gaze, uh, soft gaze, don't hard gaze. Uh. Sleepy. 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 Okay, and remind ourselves, very important, remind ourselves, so very, very important. Even though we are not asleep yet, but in this state, uh, 
is considered sleep already. It's called stage one of sleep. A lot of people are not aware. Actually, sleep uh, is not that like, oh, you sleep, go deep sleep, and morning wake up. It's not like that. Sleep got stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. Only when we reach stage four, then we have totally no awareness. No dream, you can't hear anything, you can't see anything, you're not aware. That's called stage four. Uh, only three to four hours of our sleep uh, is under stage four. The rest are at the stage one, stage two. Uh, so when you do this, like walking, sing the song, walk to the left, and we walk to the right. The mind is calm. <coughs> it's already at least stage one C. Uh, then when you feel sleepy, then you go back to the uh, So that's a creative application. Uh, how long for sleep? The more you ask, the more you need, the longer you need to do. <laughs> yes, I'm serious. The more you ask, just how many more minutes, uh, the longer you take. Uh, so the mindset is very important. That's why I emphasize. Even though you're not on the bed, even though you're not in stage 4 sleep yet, even while doing this here right now, right here, right now, sleep has already achieved. It's stage one sleep. Even if you don't sleep on the bed the whole night, if you can maintain this, uh, it's already sleep. There's no deep sleep. Hmm? There's no deep sleep. Ah, you come, I've got another talk. I've already uh, promised, already agreed. I have another talk in VGM on sleep. Uh, likely going to be November. We can talk more on that. Uh, because sometimes it's not just the practice, it's a lot of understanding. A lot of understanding. You need to understand the stages of sleep, one, two, three, four. Uh, but if you can remember today, my main message is even though you're doing this, even though it's not this sleep, it's already sleep. And if you're not too kanchong, uh, you will easily sleep into stage two and three and four. But if you're very kanchong, uh, how long do I need to stay in stage one? Uh? How long do I need to do this? Uh? If I do already, it doesn't reach stage one how? Uh? Uh, the more you think of that, uh, Stage one also <laughs> Mindful walking is mindfulness of the present moment related to the walking. So the present moment related to walking in a hiking setting. Besides the walking line, you can actually switch the attention to see. Uh, so you can appreciate the scenery around you. So you switch from here. There's a primary to switch to. Look at the trees, look at the flowers, look at the birds, which are all associated with the walking experience. Okay? Uh, so maybe for about 10 minutes you do that. Look at the flowers. Look at this. Okay? After about 10 minutes, you may want to switch to sound. Uh, so you hear. Okay. So people talking, birds chirping, there was whispering. Ah. After some time, you switch to walking. After some time, you switch back to seeing. After some time, when the mindfulness level is quite good, there's a thing called open awareness. You don't have to remind yourself to do that anymore. You just If you learn from certain meditation teachers, that is called open awareness. Open awareness. Ah, which, which personally I believe is more challenging. More challenging. Ah, for some people, at least for me. Ah, so for a start, we, we need an anchor first. We can be walking, we can be reading. But after some time, you can just switch anywhere. You can go see, go hear it. And go body sensation, and go footstep. Uh, can we end the session by singing the song? Okay. One, two, three. We walk to the left, and we walk to the right. And we walk, and we walk, everything is alright. To the left, I like go. 
I don't know. Will a smile on the face rest in here right now? We walk to the left, and we walk to the right. And we walk, and we walk, everything is alright. To the left, I don't go to the right, I don't know. With a smile on the face, rest in here right now.